and we just need to take back that mana. Mm. It's taking back that mana, but in places and spaces where sometimes people don't understand that and they need to tick the boxes and they need to, you know, um, report back this is what what is happening. Actually, don't tell us what what we need to do or what we need to know or or, or how we should do it because we know. This podcast is proudly supported by the Ōtara Network Action Committee, ONAC, community-owned, community-driven and community-led. Hoki mai anō ki we are Ōtara. Kia ora koutou, ko Gigi Spate, taka wingawa, and today it's my delight to introduce you once more to Huya Murupainga. Huya and I serve on a number of boards um, together and I guess most of all, Aside from from that structured work and and that that yeah, the formal work in the community, I'm so fortunate to to call her my friend and she's my mentor, and she's sharing our journey at Accelerating Aotearoa as a trustee there as well. So thank you for being here to listen to this conversation. When we were talking this morning before I did the intro, we were saying, you know, what did we talk about that day? And we're bouncing out of so many things and every moment, every day working with Huya is an honour and a joy. And I want you to have a, a bit of an insight into some of that joy and wonder today on this podcast. So we have a lovely time. See you on the other side. Kia ora. Ngā mihi ki a koe, te rangatira. Uh, ngā mihi huki ki uh, te hāpuri o ōtara. Uh, ngā Mana whenua, uh, me ma- uh, so I So I just just to support the corridor and and the many corridor that we've had in the past, uh, in Otara especially. You know, been here for thirty odd years, mm. um, but prior to to coming to Otara, uh, my mother in law and my husband, I mean, he's been here for fifty years since he was born. So, um, what used to be 50, 60 years ago and and Ōtara is not is not the way that it is today. And what I'm talking about, there was a lot of strong leadership, strong Māori leadership. Um and over the years that has I'm not saying that there are uh, there aren't strong leadership, Māori leadership out there, but it's that cohesiveness. Mm. It's ensuring that uh, Ōtara have the solutions for Ōtara, and that's just the kōrero that we recently had with Sully. Yeah. And so if I talk about the role that I currently – sorry, the pōtai, I have many pōtai, mm-hmm. many hats that the I wear. The wardrobe is full. Yes, the wardrobe <laughs> is full. And I think the key thing is that – the, the portai that I hold really dearly is being a nana. So, you know, I, I look at our mukapuna and what we leave behind for them. What are those footsteps? Mm-hmm. And so that cohesiveness and in my role as a, as a community person, as a otara um, member, uh, but also as a kaitaka wainga for Ōtara Waterways and Lakes, mm. accelerating Aotearoa uh, and mm. ONAC. Mm. And so when, as a kaitaka wainga, it's a connect. It's a connect to our hapuri, our community, but also to our Māori communities. Mm. And to really navigate that. So yeah, probably for the last couple of years, I have listened really taken time to sit and mm. listen and see who's who, who does what, mm. and and who do um, who do I align myself with to ensure I know where to go, you know, what, what's happening. And that's all about the, the end result, which is cohesiveness, which is about mahitahi, working together, and not about the ego, not about, um, you know, yes, we would love money, but it's not about the money because we wear these porto, we wear these hats. and From our hearts. From really our don't. hearts. Yeah. And we don't, we don't get paid for it, monetary, but we do get paid from it, from our community with that aroha. However, 
It is wittle. There's so many challenges in that. And navigating that, being able to have a breather when we come up against um, sometimes our own organisations that really challenge us mm. in, in our own beliefs and our own um, ways of thinking. So that kaitaka waenga role uh, is as pivotal as far as making sure that whatever we do as an organisation, uh, as a community, we're, we're, we're going along um, and doing it in, in the sense where we're using tikanga as the basis and we're doing it properly. So we yeah. get guided, as a kaitaka wainga, get guided by our uh, ropu, and I mentioned this this morning just recently at a board meeting, and set up a ropu just to make sure that whatever it is that I do, that we do, um, is done tika metipuno, which is correctly. Mm. And so, you know, they all interrelate, they all interconnect, and really understanding what's happening in the community. And that shift away from community where um, we want to, to bring that back, we want to have more control over that because we're the ones that live here. But also doing things our way, and I yeah. was thinking about that very same board meeting this morning where, where some people are thinking that we need to import an external way and external ways of measuring things and, you know, when will this be done and what date mm. and that's not the way it works in community and yeah. certainly not in Taoma. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, um, when, when we look at Otara in particular, you know, it's it's been known as the poor cousin. Mm. And actually we've got so many of our community leaders that have, 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 have done some amazing things and those things that they've done, you know, we – we have come through, we follow those footsteps, and we just need to take back that mana. Mm. It's taking back that mana, but in places yeah. and spaces where sometimes people don't understand that and mm. they need to tick the boxes and they need to, you know, um, report back this is what, what is happening. Actually, don't tell us what what we need to do or what mm. we need to know or, or, how. or how we should do it mm. because we know. But that's why you're the kind of why. Mm. Yes, because we know that you can explain. I've heard you ex explain, mm. not just try to explain, but but really explain so people can understand. Actually, the way you see this is not the way others see it. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think about, and I th I've used this uh, a number of times, I think about, you know, what does partnership look like? And if we go to the beach and you, you go and pick some puppies or cockles or whatever it is, and you've got a person that you're taking for the first time to the beach and you're showing them how to, how to do that and you, you fill that kete up and you each hold the handle of that kete and then you take them back to your home and you share that kai. Now, if you're going to a person's home, and you're telling them, actually, that's not, that's not, you shouldn't be eating that because that probably isn't going to be any good for you. That, if we look at that, that's not partnership. So, so partnership for me is about the sharing of that knowledge, the mm. sharing of the aroha. And if people don't get that when you're trying to explain that, then we don't need to be in partnership with them. I love that about you, that cut and dry. Yeah. It's not about not being prepared to compromise. It's just understanding when something's too far away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so if we go back to so those three elements and, and we maybe we talk a little bit about what the three elements look like. So that, that leadership raw pool, mm. what does that look like? That that's the where we where we rest the Komato leadership. Yeah. So we when we when I first took on the role as Kaitaka Wainga, um, I I realised right at the beginning that we needed to have some safety aspects because when when we we as in Maori when we work we don't work alone. Mm -hmm. We're always thinking about um, what would my tupuna do? What 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 would they? If I'm doing this particular work, um, what advice would they give me? And so we created a ropu, uh, a, a small team, and they were mainly to people that I trusted, fully trusted. And um, we had a representative, our kaumatua, 
and we also had a representative from Mana Whenua. Uh, we had yourself, Jude, um, and we we also had at the time uh, the chairperson at Faiora Kohangareo, just just mm. so that we could represent different parts of the community. Mm. And so, and from there, it was about really understanding that if anything happens, that we had the okay from our komatsua and from the ropu. Mm. We called it. Kotuku. The kotuku is the white heron, and the white heron is actually a um, it's a real tonga. It's a it's uh, if you ever see the white heron, it means something special is happening. And so we used that particular model because that's the model that we used back up at my iwi Nati Kuri, and they've done some amazing stuff within within that komats were led, and it has to be. And so from that that ropu. Um, and ensuring we get advice, you know, if, um, if say we're asked to do something like a pōhiri, that they, they fully understand that this is what's happening. So, you know, every step of the way that we're guided by that. Mm. So that's the kōtuku rōpū. Um, and f- from that, uh, we don't just have to use it in one particular area, we could use it anywhere. Uh, so I've noticed that some of the yeah that the tikanga Māori that you've enabled us to embrace over that last really the last year and I was thinking I mean it, it's it just as you would say it makes it tika mm. it, everything that we do is has this embrace mm. um, and it, it certainly that that makes me even that small thing makes me feel safe when I'm thinking about like, when Will first joined us and we had a little fakato mm. to welcome him to the Fano and, and we celebrated the t- thing that he was here. Just you know, for those of you who can't see Will, he's nodding his head very wisely <laughs> and now. <I'm> still here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was thinking about you know how instead of our you know. The way that we have throughout the community seems endless every day. But instead of going, oh, you know, who's going to say a karakia? Or will we say a karakia? Which still alarms me ever so slightly. But we know that you've got this in hand. So the whole kaupapa of the tikanga Māori is, is with you mm. to lead us. Mm. And that's it, it changes everything. Mm. And it gives us expectations about understanding and, and it gives structure Mm. Incredibility, perhaps, what we're doing. Yeah, and I, and I think I talked about mata waka, mm. and that 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 means that um, people who are tangata whenua, Māori from mm. anywhere across Aotearoa, they come from different canoe, different waka, mm. but they've landed in Ōtara. Mm. And so when you've come from a rural area into an urban area, for for some of our Māori, they've disconnected. Yeah. And so with that disconnect, it's trying to navigate how do I um, how do I move into that te ao Māori in a way where I feel safe and I take others with me that feel safe. Mm. And when we have people like our Auntie Florence, who has so much knowledge and mm. matauranga, those are the very people that hold hold that way of of doing things back in the past. Mm. But how do we ensure that we use some of those concepts uh, and and um, that w- that we used to do back in the past, but in a different environment, mm. in an urban environment? But the minute you start doing that, of course, there's a gravitation, isn't it? Because yeah. people are, oh, yeah, I remember it's yeah. how we used to do it. Yeah. So it does create the safety. Yeah. And, and for yeah. some as well, when you've had that disconnect, it's um, it's that feeling of ma, like I'm shy because mm. I should know because I'm Māori. Mm. But if you have, um, if your journey has led you where you don't really know your tikanga, you want to be with people that aren't going to judge you. Yeah. And that's how it should be, and not just for Māori, for all, um, for all people that come on this waka. Yeah, we want to be on the same waka. Mm. However, in saying that, there are going to be people who will be resistant to mm. that. Some people opt out too. Yeah, that's okay. And so that's entirely yeah. up to them, and it's about the time, space, their readiness mm. to be able to do that. Yeah. Mm. 
Wow. Yeah. And then uh, I guess if we're going with that little three-part... Um, Co-papa. Uh, the co of mm. three parts. So then there's yeah, what I just called, because it came to me when I was thinking about it, they're just the ringa ringa. So the ringa yeah. ringa are those organisations that we're already walking with, which is so exciting. Yeah. And, you know, particularly ones like um, our amazing chair at Waterways and Lakes, who's saying, well, you know, we really should be working with this organisation. And I said, well, you'll be really pleased to know, Mr Chairman, that, you know, it's already trustees of that mm. organisation. So mm. it makes it... But but it's quite natural. You know, at yeah. one point I felt that we were maybe squeezing things, but it, it gives us the, the opportunity to speak and be heard and to lead as we as we know we can. Yeah. Yeah. So rather than be too specific about it, I think back to that day that we stood at the lakeside, so you know, this huge thing for Otara that that Somebody stole a lake. Mm. Well, somebody stole an hour, turned it into a lake, and then made it paru. So it's all a pretty sad story over the last 50 or 60 mm. years. You know, um, you know, we used to, the old people still talk about swimming in the river, but that's not something you'd be doing today. Yeah. Um, and this year at a picnic with Sully, we had people, <laughs> he assures us he's only got <laughs> no horns coming out of his head yet. But um, the lake. So it was your vision and your your um, your leadership working with the Komatua to bring five different local boards together. Um, all of our key it was engineers mm-hmm. and um, other organisations, um, aligned organisations together. Who else did we have there? That well, we had the local boards and the engineers, and we had oh, Auckland Council were mm-hmm. there. And you were able to articulate the vision for the for the lake. And together, we all came together to say, yes, that's yeah. what we want to do. We want to save this water. Yeah. We don't want it to be a random cesspit of rotting. Which it currently is now. Yes, oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. So, um, and we know that's a really big journey, but to bring so many people with us, and, and all of those people are still touched I know by that vision, and so that's possibly maybe our biggest piece of work that we want to do together yep. in terms of most visual. Um, what are our plans? I know we didn't plan this, but <laughs> but it'd be kind of good to give people, you know, people who are watching this mm. conversation the the vision for how we might carry that cope up before because it's desperately important. Yeah. So so I think if we look at and you know just to link this to Pepeha. Mm. and how important pepeha is. So when we talk about pepeha, it's for us as Māori to connect us to where our maunga, where our mountain is, um, our waka, our marae, our, our chief. It's to connect those. But if we look at water, water is is just a real taonga. Mm. So... If you look at our mountain, the water flows from from our mountain, and then mm. it goes into our our roto, our awa, our moana, so our streams, our mm. you know. And when we look at ourselves as people, as tangata, mm. our waterways are the same, so we're connected to mm. that. And if our waters that we live in, our waterways and our lake is paru. If it's dirty, then the chances are what we're putting into ourselves as mm. tangata that live here in Otara is also paru. Mm. So, so it's if we if we're taking the you know the spiritual side of it, it's really important that we. It's really important that we ensure that our waters ourselves as people mm-hmm. that we're we're not clean but we're actually doing things that um that will support our our life our modi and of our fano as well mm-hmm. so on that particular day because it was a beautiful day, it was a day. uh it, it the tunnel the the weddle, uh the challenge was that bring it back to to us as the people that live here and actually Bring it back to mana whenua. Mm. 
And if we're walking alongside mana whenua and we, we are having conversations with mana whenua, then that actually is where it should sit. Yeah. But for us as people, mata waka and mana whenua and those of the, the otara community, until we can, until we actually hold that mana or take, take hold of that mana, that's when the modi will start happening. Mm. And we can see that, we can feel that, but it's it's now activating that. Did I answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> I feel the urgency, and sometimes I feel desperate, but I feel brave walking with you mm-hmm. and walking with this co-papa. Um. So we, we have to stay focused, we have to do it. And it's not about waiting for the next funding round. It's yep. about getting, you know, say, and I know you're already doing that, you know, engaging more broadly with um, mana whenua, and maybe that's a really good conversation to have when we come back together again because yeah. I'd really like this to be a regular catch-up about what's happening. Yeah, what's happening. Yep. What's yeah. the next step? You're not going to hear this on the headline news <laughs> yet. <laughs> so should we finish there? Mm. Yeah. Kia ora, Oh, kia ora.